In the last video, we learned L'Hopital's rule, which is a really powerful rule for evaluating limits and tends to be a rule that students really like. At this point in the class, you're pretty good taking derivatives, especially if the function that you're taking the derivative of is relatively simple, like the sine of x or x cubed. And the fact that the limit of a quotient is the exact same as the limit of the quotient of the derivatives is really cool. But you have to be really careful. That's not always the case. That's only true if the original quotient is what's called an indeterminate form. The point of this video is to teach you what it means to be an indeterminate form. Because I think what you'll see with L'Hopital's rule is the application of the rule itself isn't that hard. But understanding when and how to apply L'Hopital's rule is a little bit more challenging. There's some subtleties in here and frankly some pretty challenging algebra that we'll need to learn. And all that stuff is associated with this idea of an indeterminate form. So what is an indeterminate form? Well, there's a few different ways you can define it. I mean, you can list all the different types of indeterminate forms, but I don't know how useful that is for students. Maybe what's better is to say indeterminate forms are limits that you can't evaluate using the methods of the previous section. So in the previous section, it would have been totally fine to ask you to evaluate the limit as x approaches zero of cosine of x divided by three x squared. Not an especially easy question, but it'd be a fair question because you could say, well, when x gets close to zero, the top gets close to one. And when x gets close to zero, three x squared gets close to zero. So I'm in this case where I have a constant divided by a number that gets arbitrarily small. It's kind of like the vertical asymptotes that we saw in the graph of y equals one over x. Our answer is gonna be an infinity. We just have to see if it's gonna be positive or negative by figuring out whether we're dividing a negative by a negative, a positive by a negative, a negative by a positive, or a negative divided by a negative. Similarly, the limit as x approaches infinity of 120 divided by e to the x would have been a fair question in the previous section. For this one, you kind of would have been thinking end behavior. And maybe you'd recognize that the top of this fraction is not growing, but the bottom of this fraction is growing getting arbitrarily large. And when the bottom of the fraction gets arbitrarily large and the top doesn't, the limit approaches zero. The limits in blue could have been determined in the previous section if you want, therefore it's not indeterminate. However, the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x divided by x cubed and the limit as x approaches infinity of 120 of x divided by e to the x are indeterminate because they wouldn't have been fair questions in the previous section. Because if you were trying to evaluate this in the previous section, you kind of consider what happens at the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction when x approaches zero. And what you would see is both the top and the bottom of the fraction approach zero. And you would have thrown up your hands and been like, what do I do in that case? You haven't taught me that yet. I know what to do when it's like, I don't know, three divided by zero or negative five divided by zero or whatever. I understand those vertical asymptotes, but what about when it's zero divided by zero? What do I do there? Well, zero divided by zero is one of our indeterminate forms. Another indeterminate form is the infinity divided by infinity type that we get when we consider the limit as x approaches infinity of 120x divided by e to the x. And the really important thing about forms that are indeterminate and forms that are not indeterminate is you can only apply L'Hopital's rule to limits that are indeterminate formed. To make this example work a little bit better, I want a one-sided limit. So let's look at the limit as x approaches 3 from the positive side of 3 minus 2x cubed divided by 3 minus x. Well, if we had seen this in the previous section, what we would do is we can consider values of x that are really close to three, technically slightly more than three. So in your head, maybe you're thinking 3.0000000, however many zeros you want, and then a one. If I have something really close to three and I multiply it by two, I get something really close to six. And then I take three and subtract that thing that's really close to six, I get negative three. And negative three cubed is negative 27. Down in the bottom is where things get kind of tricky because if I have slightly more than three and I subtract that from exactly three, I end up really close to zero, but slightly negative because I only had three to begin with and I'm getting rid of a little bit more than three. In the last section, we learned this kind of non-standard notation to write that with zero and a little negative in the superscript. We have a non-zero constant divided by zero, so we know our answer is gonna be an infinity. And since it's a negative divided by a negative, and we know a negative divided by a negative yields a positive, we get positive infinity for this limit. This is the right answer. We can verify this answer by taking a look at the graph on Desmos of this expression and looking what happens when our x value gets really close to three, but is slightly to the right of it. But before I show you that graph, I want you to think about what would happen if we tried to use L'Hopital's rule here. If we said this was equal to, using L'Hopital's rule, although really it's not equal to, the limit as x approaches three from the positive side of the derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom. 
Well, let's see, the derivative of the top, I guess we'd have to use the chain rule. So we bring the three down in front and we'd leave the inner function, the three minus two X completely alone. And our new exponent would be a two, but then we wouldn't be done. We'd have to multiply by the derivative of the inside here. The derivative of three minus two X is negative two. So up top, what we end up with is negative six times three minus two X squared. Down on the bottom, we're taking the derivative of three minus X. The derivative of three minus X is the derivative of three plus the derivative of negative X, which is zero plus negative one. In other words, negative one. If we use L'Hopital's rule, we'd be trying to evaluate this expression that maybe we'd simplify like this, and then we can even take it a step further, canceling out this negative one and the negative in this negative six, and we get that this is just the limit as X approaches three from the positive side of six times three minus two X squared. What's the limit as X approaches three from the positive side of six times three minus two X squared? Well, when X is close to three, two times three gives us six, three minus six gives us negative three, negative three squared is positive nine, and positive nine times six is 54. The limit as X approaches three from the positive side of this expression is just 54, but this is not the right answer to this original limit. The limit of the expression shown in red is infinity, not 54. The graph of three minus two X cubed divided by three minus X is this kind of crazy looking graph, but look what happens at three here. We got this vertical asymptote. If we consider the limit as X approaches three from the positive side, we get infinitely high here. The limit as X approaches three from the positive side is most definitely not 54 and it's in fact infinity. Why did we get the wrong answer down here calling it 54? Because we tried to use L'Hopital's rule on a non indeterminate form. A non-zero constant divided by zero is not an indeterminate form. Okay, if that's not an indeterminate form, can we talk a little bit more about what is an indeterminate form? Well, we've seen two already, right? The zero divided by zero type and the infinity divided by infinity type. Every book I've ever seen, Wikipedia, anything else, is gonna list more indeterminate forms than, than just these two. I think typically you list five more indeterminate forms. Zero times infinity, for example, is what's called an indeterminate form. Infinity minus infinity is an indeterminate form. And you can memorize all these different types of indeterminate forms, but I'm here to tell you that you don't even have to. The fact that zero over zero is an indeterminate form ends up being information that I don't think you really need. Similarly, infinity to the zero power or one to the infinite power. Instead of memorizing all the different types of indeterminate forms, all you have to do is consider two different cases. The first case is the type where the base and the exponent both contain variables. So x sine of x, x one over x, x plus one natural log of one over x. When your base and your exponent both contain variables and you're evaluating limits, that's gonna be, I don't know, type two, sure. If that's not the case, you're in what we might refer to as type one. Zero times infinity and infinity divided by infinity. Suppose you were asked to evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared e to the negative x. I'm here to tell you that you don't even need to worry about the fact that this is the zero times infinity type. I mean, it is the zero times infinity type. Try changing all the X's into infinity, loosely speaking. Something that gets arbitrarily large squared is gonna get arbitrarily large. So this first factor is gonna approach infinity. But as we saw in the previous section, E to the negative X, when X gets arbitrarily large, approaches zero. Because negative exponents mean take the reciprocal, so this is really one divided by e to the x. So it's one divided by something that gets infinitely large, which approaches zero. The limit as x approaches infinity of x squared e to the negative x is the zero times infinity type. So it is an indeterminate form. So you can use L'Hopital's rule on it. But even if you didn't know any of that and you were trying to evaluate this limit, what you would do is try to make it a fraction so you can see if it's one of these indeterminate forms. You'd algebraically rewrite this thing so that it looks like a form that's conducive to L'Hopital's rule. Wait, what was L'Hopital's rule again? It's the one that tells you if you're taking a limit of something divided by something else. That's not the case down here. This is something times something else. So what I have to do is rewrite this thing so it's something divided by something else. I'm not using L'Hopital's rule. I'm just rewriting this limit. This equal sign does not have an H on the top of it. I'm just saying this is the limit as X approaches infinity of Maybe instead of x squared times e to the negative x power, I could write it as x squared divided by e to the positive x power because negative exponents mean take the reciprocal. Even if I didn't know this was an indeterminate form, my first step would be to write it as a fraction so that I can see if I can determine this limit. 
Now that you look at this limit, maybe you're like, wait a minute, as X gets arbitrarily large, the top gets large and the bottom gets large. This is the infinity over infinity type. So now I can use L'Hopital's rule. We didn't need to know that this was the zero times infinity type because the minute we make it a fraction, it turns into the infinity over infinity type. Hence, we can use L'Hopital's rule. Using L'Hopital's rule, we take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. We get that this limit is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x divided by e to the x, which is still an indeterminate form. It's still the infinity over infinity type. So we can use L'Hopital's rule one more time and get the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of 2x, in other words, 2, divided by the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x. We have a non-zero constant divided by something that gets arbitrarily large. As we've seen a few times, that limit evaluates to zero. Yes, it's true that this zero times infinity type is an indeterminate form, but we never needed that knowledge. Instead, just try to rewrite it in a form conducive to L'Hopital's rule, and then ask yourself the question, am I in one of the two indeterminate forms that I'm already comfortable with? Zero over zero and infinity over infinity. You are, it's the infinity over infinity type. Great, use L'Hopital's rule until you get your answer. What's kind of cool is it turns out that works down here too. Infinity minus infinity is an indeterminate form because loosely speaking, we don't know which infinity is bigger, right? If this one's getting bigger quicker, then I'm taking a whole lot and subtracting just kind of a lot. And so I end up with a ton. But if this one's getting bigger quicker, then I'm taking kind of a lot and subtracting way, 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 way more. So I end up with a huge negative number. Or maybe these infinities are getting large at the exact same rate, in which case I end up with zero. This is the same as this. I don't know, it's indeterminate, but that's okay. You don't even have to recognize that this is an indeterminate form. All you have to do is rewrite it into a form that's conducive to L'Hopital's rule. Note this first equal sign doesn't have an H on top because I'm not using L'Hopital's rule yet. I'm just rewriting this limit. Secant, as I learned in a trade class, is one divided by cosine. And tangent, as I learned in a trade class, is sine divided by cosine. So really this limit is equal to this limit. And since I now have a common denominator, maybe I could rewrite this as one minus sine of x divided by cosine of x. Now that it's a form conducive to L'Hopital's rule, I stare at it and ask myself the question, can I determine this limit? Well, let's see, if x gets really close to pi over two, thinking back to my trig class and unit circles and such, I'm thinking about the point that's up here that has an x coordinate of zero and a y coordinate of one. Therefore, the sine of pi over two is equal to one and the cosine of pi over two is equal to zero. So if I try to evaluate this limit, as x gets really close to pi over two, sine of x gets really close to one, so I have one minus one, in other words, something really close to zero up top. And as we already talked about, when x gets close to pi over two, cosine of x gets really close to zero, so the top and the bottom of this fraction are both approaching zero. I got a zero over zero indeterminate form, so I can use L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule tells me that if I want to evaluate this limit, I got to take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of one minus sine of x, the derivative of the one goes away, and the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, so I get negative cosine of x up top. Down on the bottom, the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. I can cancel out the negatives if I want to get that this is just the limit as x approaches pi over two of cosine of x divided by sine of x. Then I ask myself the question, is this something I can determine? Yeah, absolutely it is. When x gets close to pi over two, cosine of x gets close to zero. When x gets close to pi over two, sine of x gets close to one. Zero divided by one is not an indeterminate form. Zero divided by one is just equal to zero. The limit as x approaches pi over two of secant of x minus tangent of x is equal to zero. That's not something I could have figured out without L'Hopital's rule. But wait, I didn't know that I could use L'Hopital's rule because I'm not comfortable recognizing that this is infinity and that this is infinity and infinity minus infinity is an indeterminate form. You don't have to. Yes, when x gets close to pi over two, secant of x gets close to infinity. And when x gets close to pi over two, tangent of x gets close to infinity. And this is one of the seven indeterminate forms, but you don't need to know that. If you saw this problem, you just have to change it into a fraction to see if you can evaluate the limit or to see if you can use L'Hopital's rule. When you change it into a fraction, it's the zero over zero type, which is one of the indeterminate forms that we're comfortable with. There's three more types of indeterminate forms. I kind of group them together as type two. But just like these two that we've seen, you don't have to memorize the different types. You just need to know the algebraic tricks necessary to change these into fractions so you can try to use L'Hopital's rule. I could squeeze that in now, but I think it's gonna take a little while. So I'm gonna end this video here and pick up with that topic in the next video.